as you know, you're in Congress. Now, once you get to become the president, there's still another branch of government you need to deal with, and that is, of course, the legislative. How would you deal with the fact that, I know we need to reduce the size of government, we need to reduce the spending, but too often the discussion is about raising taxes or lowering taxes. When, in fact, in that example, um, the tax system is very complicated. And that's done by design, which is, if it was simplified, members of Congress would have a much more difficult time raising money. So, to the, the woman's question, Buckley v. Vallejo, 1976, and now Citizens United in 2010, it's, there's, a, there's a point to be made in terms of how would you actually succeed in reducing the size of government when members of Congress spend now between 30 and 50% of their time raising money, and they're now on pace to now spend less than 70 days in Washington because they're out raising money for their own re-election. And in fact, new facts show that 78% of money, on average, comes from outside of the district that that member represents. So, how would you, being president, be able to deal with this heavy, heavy influence of money in politics? And I've spent enough time in Washington to know that the only reason anything happens in Washington is for three reasons. One, money, power, and re-election. So how would you deal with that as president? And that is exactly what motivates the, the politicians on there. It's, it's money and power. You know, when there are these wild debates on the House floor, uh, it's, it's usually over who's going to get the power and who's going to win the next election. You're exactly right. So, like I said, one alternative is sending only people down there that won't play that game, but so far that hasn't worked very well. The next thing is, is changing government, changing the member of Congress, and, and that has happened to a degree. Uh, the third thing is having a different type of president that will immediately use the authority of the presidency not to make the executive branch bigger, but to shrink the size of the executive branch and, and eliminate all these powers. It's really the big issue and the big question because uh, you're not going to wave a wand and you're not going to accomplish that. But you have to set a standard and we, they have to see what direction we're going in. Right now, it, it's slowing up because we're running out of money. But one, once we, we have to change the direction, you know, if, uh, if, if a week after I'm inaugurated, the ships are going around the world and bringing our troops home, maybe they believe that there's going to be a different system. And what if we use the executive order to cancel out all the executive orders that have been designed for us? <laughs> <laughs>